Hi, so in today's lesson we're going to review Lesson 3A.5, Image Recognition in AR Kit. Let's get started and create a new Xcode project. We want the Augmented Reality App template. Choose Next, and for this one we're going to call it AR Image Finder. And we'll go with Scene Kit and all the rest and go with Next and save it to your computer. First thing we want to do is in the view controller, let's remove the line where it creates the scene from the art scene assets and adds it. So we'll delete those two lines. And then um, we want to go to the art scene assets and we can go ahead and delete these. I'm just holding down shift and I'm going to right click and delete and just move to trash. Once you have this set up, what we're doing is taking images that we've already uh, captured on our phone or wherever, and we are adding them as a resource. What this does is it takes the images that we add to this resource and it uses them as part of the image detection. Let's click over to our assets folder. And from here, down here at the bottom, we want to click the plus sign and we want to say new AR resource group. Now from here, we can add some images and I'm just going to click and drag a few images. So these are images that I've taken with my phone and I then just added them to my computer. I just over airdrop. It's easy to transfer them to your computer. So once you have them on your computer, I just renamed them and these are just various images around my office. So you'll notice first that it has this little indicator and it's saying, hey, this needs to have a width and height. So what we'll do is select an image and then over in the inspector, we want to give this what is considered the physical size of the object. And in this case, I'm referencing a cup and you select what the, the size dimensions you're going to reference. And in this case, I'll just say in inches. And the way this works is the image itself is a relative size. And when you add one width or height, it's going to set up the corresponding width for you. So in my case, if I say that this cup is approximately what? Six inches and I press tab, it's going to calculate the width for me because it's maintaining an aspect ratio. Anyway, you'll just notice that you can only set the width or the height and it's just fairly, it's just kind of relative, but it gives the uh, app a sense of what it's looking for. Now, if I come over here uh, for microphone, it's, I just have this little microphone on my camera and uh, you know, the width is maybe four inches. And then over here, this is a picture of a speaker that's next to my computer monitor. And its height is what, maybe 10 inches. Um, make sure we set that to inches. And we say 10. And then someone's gonna say, Brent, you didn't change this. So I wanna change this to inches. <laughs> and let's go with five inches. There we go. And you can set the name and you can, you'll use the name in order to reference it in code. So just be aware of that. But we'll just keep it with microphone. Okay. So now I have my images set. Now, for some reason, these errors still show up, but there's nothing in them because it's not an error anymore, but for whatever reason, it's doing that. So we'll let it do that. Okay. Let's go back to our view controller in order to enable image detection in our view will appear method on the configuration, we need to set a reference to the assets folder that we added, that we just created, which was called AR resources. And then we assign that to the configuration. So down here, after we've created our configuration, we're going to say, let reference images equal, and they are AR reference image dot reference images and then it's the one that says in grouped name in group named and then in this it's the name of the folder which is ar resources 
and then the bundle is nil. And then we're going to force unwrap that. So what happens is if you go back to the assets folder, this name of the folder, AR resources, represents the images I'm referring to. And so when we come back here now, uh, once we have created the reference images, then under the configuration, we've already created our configuration. We can then say configuration dot detection images equals reference images. So now we've assigned it to our worldview AR world tracking configuration. And we're saying, Hey, here are some reference images that we are going to look for. The method we're going to use to identify when an image is found is the same method that we've used in previous videos, which is the renderer uh, delegate and it's the renderer did add. And this is used when it identifies uh, things like the, a plane or an anchor or, you know, an image. These are, this is the same delegate method that we're going to use in this instance to look for images. So we, go ahead and create the function and we say renderer and we're looking for the one that said did add. And from here, we're going to set up um, our reference to the anchor, uh, to the image anchor, which we're, what we're only looking for is anchors that represent images. So we can say guard, G U A R D guard, let image anchor equal anchor oops, as AR image anchor. Otherwise we say else we return. So we're only interested in when it finds anchors that are of type image anchor. Now the book goes through and talks about a few different ways to handle. You could detect images. You could also detect planes. You can uh, basically create multiple, you know, this function, the renderer can be used for multiple things. And so you could have, you know, a, a switch statement to switch through the anchor and find and see if you're looking for images or a plane, if you're looking for walls or something. When we find an image, we get the AR image anchor has a reference image property. And this property then gives us information about the image that it's referencing, that it's found, and we can get a physical size, which has a width and height. So what this allows us to do is create a, a plane to visually place over the image that was found. And that way we know that something was identified. So for that, what we want to do is uh, get a reference. We're going to say, let reference image equal image anchor dot reference image. So this is what it, uh, based on the list of images, this is the one it found. And then we're going to create a plane. We're going to say let plane equal scene plane. And it's going to have a width of the reference image dot physical size dot width. And then for the height, we're going to say the reference image dot physical size dot height. And again, this is based on the information we created when we had our assets and we added the physical image size. So that's what it's going to return, but it's going to be based in 3d space. Then we want to create a geometry and we want to color this. And so um, first we can set the color. We can say plane dot first material uh, dot diffuse dot contents. And we set it to the color. We've done this before, but we're just reviewing that. So we want to set it to blue. And then we create the node that gets added to the scene. We say plane node equals scene node and it's going to be a geometry and it's going to be the plane that we just created. And then we set the plane node opacity 
equals 0 0.25. So then it overlays it so we can see through it. Next, we say node.addChild node, and it's the plane node. Now, in order for this to uh, be, so the images I took are vertical. So uh, we want to rotate this plane. And so in order to do that, uh, we can come up here, we can say plane node dot, and it's the Euler angles. We've done this again, we did this in the other one, we say dot x equals, and then we would do negative float dot pi divided by two. So that will rotate it on the x axis so that it'll be vertical. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. So here's the app running, and here's my cup. And there's the plane, so there it found it. So I placed the little blue plane there. And then here's my speaker. And there, found and recognized the speaker, still recognizes my cup. And then up here is the microphone, and there it is. So now it's recognized all three images. Pretty cool. So next, when we found the images, there's a lot of things we could do with that. We can, you know, right now we're adding a plane to the visual, to the camera so we can see where the image was, but if you uh, wanted, you could identify what the image was. So in the reference image, there's also the name property, which gives you the name of the image. And so if you, let's say you were creating a game and in the book, it even has a challenge where it says, you know, create an Im a treasure hunt with three images. And then you're going around trying to find those images. Well, you would know that by identifying the image name and then checking and if it's the right image, then you could show different, you could put up uh, 3D objects, you could do all sorts of things that relate to that image. One thing that I do want to show is um, one way, let's say you've, you've found an image, but then you want to get rid of the plane, you don't, you, know, you want it to fade away or, you know, we're not interested in having it shown up the whole time you can use what is called the scene action and remove uh, and run an, an action and you can do all sorts of things with animations. Uh, the book mentions a couple, let me just do one, which is we're going to, down here in our delegate, we're gonna say plane node dot run action and the action we're gonna call wait remove action. And then down here, we're going to create an, it's a var and it's wait, remove action, which is a scene action. And in that it's going to return dot sequence and the actions, you can have an array of actions. And here we're saying dot wait. And then the duration is going to be, we'll just say two seconds. And then we're going to say dot fade out. And the duration is going to be one second. And then after that, we're going to say dot remove from parent node. So here we have a combination of animations. We're going to first, the first action is to wait, and then we're going to fade out and then we'll remove parent. Let's go ahead and run that. Okay, so there it's found the image and then it faded out and it removed it. There we go. And then it gets added and it fades away. And let's see if we can find the microphone. And there's the microphone again and it fades out. Awesome. So this is pretty straightforward. And again, you can do quite a bit with this. You can load up a lot of different images. You could use things, um, you know, landmarks, different things, but you have to basically prime the 
app with the images that you're interested in uh, recognizing. Keep in mind that when you start adding more images, it does add to the size of the app because it's taking these larger resolution images and it kind of adds to it. So you have to consider what ways you're going to uh, build an app around that. But hopefully that was helpful. Thanks again for watching. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe and tell all your friends and family. All right, see you in the next video.